Hello and welcome once again to The Blueprint. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, give or take. We ask that you like, comment, subscribe, share this program. Help us push back against the ever-moving liberal agenda. And do we ever have a great program for you, a fiery program, in our brand new studio. We have a couple of guests for you that are going to talk about mandates, we're going to talk about getting back to normal, and we're going to talk about people pushing to have their message heard. So, if you can't listen or watch it all right this second, please download it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. Two returning guests here for this fiery program. We have Raquel Dancho, the Member of Parliament for Kildonan St. Paul in the beautiful province of Manitoba. She's also the public safety critic for the Conservative Party. And we also have Stephen Ellis, Dr. Stephen Ellis, Cumberland Colchester. It's his writing. He's also the special advisor for COVID-19. We welcome them both back on an important topic. A lot has been happening in Ottawa. I, I just don't even know where to start. Wow, it's been <laughs> overwhelming, Jamie. So we have Joel Lightbound coming out today Good saying moment. that the government needs to ease restrictions. We need to talk about a plan to give people hope for the future. And, and maybe we'll start with you, Raquel, because you had a fiery speech yesterday in the House of Commons. I think anyone who has not seen that speech needs to go to our Facebook page and, and listen to that speech. It is amazing. Basically, what you said yesterday is what Joel Lightbound, the Liberal MP from Quebec, is repeating today. Yeah, so two things on Mr. Lightbound. Number one, I applaud his courage. I, uh, he put a lot on the line, and I wonder, I, I hope he stays in Liberal caucus, but uh, based on Trudeau's track record of dealing with those who don't agree with his very narrow vision of what diversity means, uh, I, I, I fear that he may not be long for that Liberal caucus. But I really applaud his, his courage. And, and the second thing is, is I think we've heard what he said before. I think conservatives have been saying for quite yep. some time Absolutely. that we need to come forward with a real plan. We need to see the government bring forward thresholds, metrics to give Canadians hope that we are going to get out of this, that these restrictions are going to end, that this divisive, these divisive policies are going to end. I know Michelle Rumpel Garner, which she was health critic over well over a year ago, she was talking about please present a plan to give Canadians hope. And, and Dr. Ellis, I know that you have particular expertise on this. I'm not sure if you'd like to pick up about what kind of you know, we need a plan. I think that's a valuable and reasonable thing to ask two years into this. I agree 100 percent, Raquel. You know, it's it's very disappointing to have this lack of leadership that mm -hmm. that has plagued this country for many years now and certainly been magnified over the last two years. And it has, as, as Jamie said, taken away the hope for Canadians as to what the future is going to bring for all of us. And now that we begin to see these lifting of restrictions and mandates and lockdowns, Canadians can begin to have plans for their future and to have some excitement back in their life. You know, as, as we were speaking beforehand, it's, it's so liberating to think that, hey, you don't have to have a pass or a, or a mask, uh, those kinds of things, and to get back to that life uh, that we've all been used to. So it's an exciting day for Canadians, absolutely. So the province of Saskatchewan announced today that they're lifting restrictions on the vaccine passports as of this coming Sunday. By the end of the month, all other restrictions will be lifted. And so I think that is giving people some hope, some renewed uh, vision that we can get back to normal. And some of these measures are temporary. But in terms of the federal mandates, when travel, that kind of thing, nothing seems to be moving. I think Trudeau in his remarks yesterday doubled down. Yes. He doubled down on legitimizing his approach to this, which, I mean, it was only two, two and a half weeks ago that what sparked this entire uh, uh, movement and demonstration across the country was his new mandate. And so this is two years into the pandemic, and he's still using the same tools that he's been using all along. And we know that all these tools are important, but we see other jurisdictions across the world moving forward and at least giving their... Uh, constituents and their citizens hope here's a plan this is how we're going to go about doing this and I think it's perfectly reasonable for Canadians to expect that two years into this two years of trauma two years of hardship and job loss and mental anguish and we can go on and on and on every Canadian has felt different levels of trauma um, I think it's reasonable for Canadians to say okay enough is enough we need to know how this is going to end and we need to see uh, a positive mood forward and I was so disappointed last thing I'll say so disappointed sitting across from the Prime Minister 20 feet away from him he's been silent on this mm -hmm. largely other than to come out uh, of hiding and name call and yep. uh, raise the temperature he's been silent then he, he takes this massive platform the world is watching and just doubles down no compassionate leadership, no bridge building. I was incredibly disappointed. I think a lot of Canadians were. And even his, his chief medical adv advisor, Dr. Theresa Tam, is saying we need to rethink these mandates. We need to rethink provincial and federal 
ways of doing business, which I think has been our message for a long time. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think when we look at other jurisdictions around the world, we realize that the UK's vaccination rates are much lower than those here in Canada and uh, other countries like Denmark, etc. Again, lower than Canadian standards. Canadians have done their, their part for everybody. You know, they've had each other's backs. Let's be honest. It's Canadians who've had each other's backs. Mm -hmm. And the Prime Minister has showed this lack of leadership over and over and over again being very divisive. I can't understand it. That, that's certainly not any style of leadership that anyone that I know could possibly understand or support. And, you know, I think it's exciting that, that we want to bring forward this message that of hope for Canadians and unifying Canadians and that obviously the, the government in waiting is that of the Conservative Party and, and we're ready and, and willing, able to move forward and, and govern this country in the way it should be. And isn't it concerning that the Prime Minister, and, and Joel Lightbound spoke to this, and we've been talking about it forever. That's the other frustrating part. A lot of the stuff that Joel Lightbound was talking about just in his press conference this morning, we've been talking about for months, if not years. Mm -hmm. And, and so. the division, you know, this was not a polarized topic. The idea of mandates and vaccines was not polarized prior to going into the election. But when the election was called... The Prime Minister's poll numbers started to go downhill. He needed a new victim, right? We had East versus West, rich versus poor, urban versus rural. And those were all divisions that were sowed before the election. Then it became vaccinated versus unvaccinated in order to win the election. Yeah, that seems to be his go-to, um, the way that he operates in elections is to divide and conquer, I guess, is the way that he does that. Rather than presenting a unifying vision for the country that people can really get excited and get behind and move forward together as a united country, which we know is not easy in Canada. This is a, a lot of hard work to keep Canada united as a country for so many different historic reasons. And we're not, we're just seeing him take the divisions and, and use them to his advantage and just sort of twist this evil knife to uh, further divide Canadians. And again, I think it was it not the case that his government this time around, this minority government, his second minority government, uh, won the lowest percentage of the popular vote in the history per capita in the history of Canada. So they have a very weak hold on power, relatively speaking, and yet he's just doubling down on the this divisive rhetoric. And I think your average Canadian, and we're seeing this in the polls, over 50% of Canadians now are saying, you know what, I've had about enough of this. I've done everything I was, I'm, I was told. This is too hard on my kids, too hard on me, too hard on my elderly parents. Let's move forward. And yet the Prime Minister has completely been disconnected from that. So I think his speech was tone deaf. The world was watching. It was an opportunity to show you know, almost, a, you know, a prime ministerial level of leadership, so to speak, and it fell very flat and tone deaf. And we're seeing a massive shift, I think, within even media in Ottawa saying, okay, this isn't, this isn't working. This is not de-escalating. Where's the leadership? You know, and I think Canadians, uh, as you said, Raquel, they readily and easily recognize that, that enough is enough. Um, you know, people have given up everything. The, you know, the, the fact that you couldn't, uh, and in some places still cannot visit your loved one in a nursing home. Uh, that's very, very traumatic for people. And, and you think back to the times where, you know, people, they're, they're not even hugging each other. They're missing out on birthdays and bar mitzvahs and, and weddings and funerals. Um, this is unacceptable. I really think and believe uh, that it's important that we understand that it, our lives are not simply about COVID. We have to think about our financial health, our social health, our mental health, and our physical health. And when we look at the, that's the idea of a government is to take all of those things into consideration, to not be one-minded and exclusionary and, as you said, Raquel, divisive. And that's what we've seen from this government, and that's uh, intolerable to all of us. And just think of this, the, the measures that the government has put in place that have really punished those uh, for differing views. Y you think about the fact that those who aren't getting a vaccine for whatever reason, they're now ineligible for employment insurance. Like, that's their money that they put in, they paid into, and now they can't even access it because this, this prime minister just wants to divide and conquer. Yeah, and I think, you know, our, our party has been very loud and clear right from the get-go when vaccines were first being procured, our support for vaccination and the hard work we put in to deliver that option for Canadians at a massive scale. And of course, we were very slow to get those vaccines at first, which mm -hmm. I believe still to this day led to the third wave of the pandemic. But once we got them, it was great to see, and it had a huge uptake. And we also know many, many thousands of Canadians have died of COVID, have long COVID, delayed surgeries. The trauma is real. And some people will never take their masks off, will never travel. Yep. And that's important to acknowledge. Absolutely. And uh, but that being said, uh, just like you said, we need to we need to have a prime minister who's going to bring us together and move forward. It's almost as if this for him, he's happy if this never ends. He seems to just enjoy, as you said, punishing people. 
and uh, the policies aren't changing at all. There's there's just no um, no collaboration. And our, uh, our our leader had brought forward yesterday showed real class and leadership and said wrote him a letter and said let's meet all parties together. Let's sit at the table and talk about solutions. It is time. And uh, well, we saw his response to that in the speech yesterday. No change. He might as well have stayed at home in hiding for all the good that speech did. So I'm I continue to be disappointed, yeah. but I have hope. I have hope the the winds are changing, and we'll see increasing provinces uh, opening up, and hopefully the federal government will catch up. I hope so too. So, uh, Dr. Ellis, do you think it made sense at this point in time for the government to implement some of these mandates? Hang on to some of the travel mandates that are in place. Hang on to some of these border mandates that are in place. It, it's is it time or is it not time to start relaxing some of this? You know, Jamie, or getting rid of them. I, yeah, you know, I, I certainly can't see why. We know that uh, the Omicron variant is is in the United States, for instance. It's in Canada. We all know many people who have had it now. Uh, we know that it's it's relatively relatively ubiquitous, and given that sense, you know, and also given the idea that Canadians have the right to re-enter their own country, how can we block their re-entry by saying you need a test or you need to go isolate? And and we also know the terrible stories that we've heard from people being randomly selected to have another test and having to wait at home many many days for the answer as to whether you're positive or negative, and be in isolation and not be able to be a productive member of society. That type of punishment, again, is absolutely and utterly inappropriate. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that you know some of the things that we need to look at as Canada's Conservatives, being the voice of the people, is how do we move forward with those things? And I think, Raquel, you, yeah, you, you have some things in. to say with yeah, respect to no, that as well. Yeah, Dr. Ellis, very level-headed response there that I think a lot of Canadians are connecting with. And, and one thing I want to say on travel, what I heard from a lot of my constituents was the reason they got the vaccine, well, to do their part, that mm -hmm. was the message uh, from governments for sure. But a lot of it was a motivating self-interest, yep. like, I want to travel. I want, my I life want back. to travel. Yeah, I, I want, want my life back. They, governments have said, we, we promise to give you your life back if you do this. And then Omicron came along, and we know it was, you know, this is, we're learning things as we go. I recognize that. But people had been promised their lives back people have been profit promised to go deal with their businesses mm -hmm. across the border or their properties or take their kids to travel to get some relief from all of this chaos and uh, that opportunity was shut down and now if you try to travel the policies are so vindictive in a way that it, it punishes you shame on you for traveling but they were promised they could travel if they stepped up and so in in some what i'm saying is i think that uh, we people lose trust mm -hmm. in government at a time that we need to have trust and it's things like that that make people not trust their governments. And so I think it is really time for this national discussion to happen. You know, timing is everything. And I'm glad to see it happening finally after two long years. Absolutely. It's a great conversation in our brand new studio. Usually I give it's the guests the... It is kind of nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's hopefully the, the one of many. Uh, I usually give the guests the last word, but we do have to cut away because we have question period coming up. We have the leader that's going to take over on this channel. So please stick around for question period. Candace Bergen and the rest of the team uh, holding the Liberal government to a town. We do appreciate you joining us here today. If you like the content, I think it was really good. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this program. Together, we can give a narrative that is not being talked about on the mainstream media. As always, new content every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Low taxes, less government, more freedom. That's the blueprint.